flip side tactics starting on the T side. Show me those tactics, Blake. Yeah, just a single smoke there for steel for the Immortals side as far as utility goes. The rest opt in to get all of the armors, the Kevlars there. And those USPs very dangerous until you close that distance with those Glocks. Steel playing this bait setup there. Looking to get the frags here. This is really troublesome, though. That setup will have to be abandoned here as well, that it finds himself around the green train. Looking to cause damage. Lucas picked off as well, going aggressive towards Ali. And now this is really in the hands of Flipside. They've got a great advantage to take this A bomb site, but the bomb's still down towards T spawn at the moment. Yeah, that bomb needs to be collected before Immortals start to put surcharges on it. Nobody moving towards T main, though, for Immortals at the moment, at present. Steel barely present in this round with all of three HP and that kit. If he is to fall, then Immortals will need to uh, bear in mind where that kit is and it might come into play later. Pistol round. Looking for headshots, requiring headshots are both these teams. There goes the decoy. May slow things down, but Steel will eventually drop. So the diffuse kit's in the hell position and Immortals might be in hell when it's two versus four. And Kianji making his way around the side of the bomb train. And able to make any connections just yet. Henny also struggling to find the connection to the last bullets. Will do it though. And another one from Henny all of a sudden as Kianji tries to get his positioning onto the train, but denied ultimately as Henny now is left to do the job with two players left. There is a kit somewhere. I wonder if Henny knows where it is. He's got other concerns here. Another nice pop-off there onto Blade with the USP, but time is running out swiftly now for Henny as he turns the corner around the train, looking for the next frag against Electro Electronic there, and perhaps is all he can do now to save his Kevlar as he starts to run away. It's a long run, and what do you survive Throw the Glock here? away. Throw the Glock away, Henny. Ooh. If he throws the Glock away, he will spawn over USP, and he's not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I am slightly sad. There is a tear in my eye. There isn't really. I'm lying. I won't lie to you again. I'm sorry. FYI, if you throw away your stock pistol, you will spawn of a new one in the next round. The pistol round goes to flip side tactics. There are some headshots from Henny, but it wasn't enough. From Hen1. Doesn't mind being called Henny. He said he thinks it sounds kind of cool. I think he even went so far as to say. I think it does. Yeah. And you can see that the save of the Kevlar does go quite a long way, especially with all the frags that he got. I did wonder how he would handle his own economy because he you know, has all that money with all those kills to play with. And he's decided to opt for the not only the scout, but a smoke, a kit, which well, I think he picked up the kit, but also an HE as well. So he's pretty stacked as far as the force by round is concerned. And you can see the flip side have a lot of UMPs here, actually, and a lot of utility too. So I'm sure that we'll see a well thought out and drilled round here from the man blade for flip side to alleviate some of the tension that comes in rounds when you're up against a force buy. There you go, the smoke grenades. A flashbang. And another one, but the second one misses the mark and the CZ will prevail. Well did it taken down. What weapon has been collected? It's a UMP, but the push seems to be coming towards B eventually, but it's not really working out for flip side. Waylander in the red, down to 8 HP. They know the bomb is there and he's got no support. Going for the hero plant as his team will be late on the rotation. How long can Waylander survive? How much damage can be done too? It's looking like Lucas will get the frag there and make his way forwards. And AK can be picked up there on the bomb train. Blade going for the play now. The pressure's on as the defuse starts to come in. Picks up that AK at the bottom of the ramp. And there goes the Molotov. And that's going to really ruin Lucas's day or his round at the very least. As now there's no defuse really possible here for the CTs. And there is a kid actually on the defuse at the moment. They've got to be fast here to deny this. Markov's too slow. And that will be the round there for Immortal, stealing things away from Flipside with the Force Buy and surviving with three players. That is fantastic there for Immortals. I do wonder where the, where the T's were when that bomb was heading towards B because they seem to be over towards the main area, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe the replay will show us. Okay, it's quite deep in, so we can't see. But that's a disaster for Flipside and a great round from Immortals in the end. Three players surviving as well, and they will take weapons into the next round. Chief Steel is already super hyped. He's mad hyped, as the Brazilians always are on the Immortals team. It's great to watch. It's great to hear. 
at the uh, offline qualifier. Our room was next door. The talent chill out room was next door to where the teammates, the team were playing. So our room was reverberating, James. We could hear the, we could feel the vibrations. We could hear the screams and the slams from uh, some place we didn't have much of the tournament. Two AKs in round number three for the CT side. Yeah, it's, it's actually kind of insane, isn't it? Considering that the previous round was a force fight, but it was so successful for them in KNG. KNG with the first kill onto Blade. Drawing first blood. But there's much more blood to be had now as Flipside are discovered towards the alley position. KNG waiting patiently with his AK, and the bomb will be recollected by Mr. World Edit. But they are not so long for this world until the next round in which they respawn. So here it is. Two rounds for Immortals, one for Flipside, and it's a great start here for Immortals. It doesn't really get better than this from like a value perspective. You crush the Force by, you reset the other team, and you pick up all the guns as well. So if Immortals are able to win this round against Flipside, they start to really get a big advantage, and we see the first orp of, I'm sure, many to come. Any three and zero for the time being. KNG will continue with the scout. May look to pick up a second AWP later if Flipside are able to afford one, but right now that may not be the case. Henny finding a gap around the Molotov, but the flashbang is there for Flipside. They come prepared to the Flipside tactics team. Now we may see the run boost or even a simple jump to the other side of Ivy. Two plays around Ivy for the CT team. And you can take some pot shots, but that will give the uh, clue away to flip side that a scout is in play and it's in that position. Three plays around connector for the CT side. Just waiting. Flip side waiting as well, perhaps for Immortals to use more of their utility. And Immortals, they've got a fair amount left. Three smoke grenades at the minute mark for the CTs. Yeah, it's all about positioning and finding the right timing here for flip side as they start to make their way into these forward spots and these grenades are important for the immortal side for the ct defense to stagger the push that's really how you best deal with a triple pronged attack find ways to smoke off one angle and make sure that they can't coordinate as which they will be trying to do so now it's going to go well here for the flip side tactics team is marked off gets the first kill but they have sustained so much damage here and there will be right targets for lucas as he sweeps in for a 2k with the m4 20 seconds remain. Still a CT in the Ivy position. How does the bomb go down? The bomb is down on the floor, and Waylander's got to find it. He's on his own. Lucas towards Ivy. Bolts in connector. There's nowhere to start the bomb safely, and Bolts will win the duel. Very difficult times for Waylander and Flipside early on in train. The last match of the evening. Fighting for the last spot in the playoffs. A big opportunity for both these teams to make it to legend status. Flipside would love it to guarantee their place in the next major. Immortals, after so many struggles to get to this major, maybe it would be a weight off their backs. They continue three to one, putting Flipside on pistols. P250s are out for the entire side. Not often you see uh, a five P250 buy. We don't even have a name for that. P1250. How about that? We could, that can be a work in progress. But that will do for now. It's a placeholder. Kianji not a placeholder though. He's very much a solid part of this defense with high impact. Lots of M4 fire there rained upon the flip side members as they charge in with no Kevlar and likely no hope. And indeed, everybody's surviving for Immortals despite three being deeply in the red. That's very much a welcomed fact for Immortals, their money is getting quite awesome at the moment. We're going into round six and they are all pretty much around between five to six K dollars apart from just steel. These, well, poor steel, and only $2,200. But uh, the economy is booming for the Brazilians. But will the AWP be booming here for Henny? Because we've got a lot of nades here for Flipside and I'm sure we are gonna see those nades put to good use. Nice flash towards Ivy, but it will give the position away for Waylander. The frags will be taken by the T side. A good start, but can they finish and double their score? The two KNG fighting on his own towards Ivy. So far, so good. Even better now. Three fast kills for the CT side, fighting straight back 
taking the man advantage. KNG still around Ivy, and that's where he will lay. Bomb almost connected by Wilder, but he'll get taken down by Bolt from the back. And it's Waylander again, alone again. But this time, no one's over towards Ivy, but he doesn't have the bomb. This could be a good approach here from Waylander, but it's been sought after. And that's good damage done by Bolts, but Waylander's still alive and with a hope to try to stay, take this round away from Immortals. Oh my goodness, just barely escaping that angle there is. There's over, well, just under a minute to play with here for Waylander, so he can use that time to juke and jive around the trains on the A yard here to find this element of surprise with which he can use to take success perhaps, but just... A slither of Henny spotted before he disappears, but maybe that's enough information here. The Waylander, yes it is! Finds the headshot amid eight points of health on him. Great clutch there. And that's going to be a beautiful result from Waylander. One of the power players of flip side with the quad kill there to show for himself early in this train match. 4K required for Waylander to drag his team over the line in that round, but it's just the start of something for Flipside. Start of momentum, consecutive rounds, success, catching up to the score, evening the score. Time will tell. Look how Blade is feeding that one. The fire is in the belly. And Flipside are on the bite. AWP rescued by Waylander towards the end of that round. And KNG's got one. Nice bouncing from Henny. He's got a second AWP. Where does he throw the smoke? Chooses to put it in front of the angle to try and help him escape. Waits the flames out. Meanwhile, Lucas will be flashed as well. That's not going to work out for him, but KNG's taken well it down in the meantime. And that might mean that Lucas is trapped. An exchange of grenades. Sorry, Markov is trapped, and Markov will escape. Markov with the AWP. But surely there isn't a repeat. A lot of early exchanges there between both sides. I think Henny lucky to survive there in the corner. Beautiful play though, and that's I love that aggression from him. It's just so amazing that Immortals picked up another opera that's super aggressive as well in Kienji. So we'll see whether he can get some damage on already with the one frag. And he's been having a great game so far already. I mean, well, we're only seven rounds in and he's really been performing and look forward to seeing more from him. But flip side, we're about to see a lot more from them onto the B bomb side as they start to charge in bots with the off angle around the bomb train. Waylander though, dropping from the heavens above and dropping bolts with him. And that's going to be the bomb down now for the flip side team. It's going to be tough for the Brazilians to break back in, but they are making inroads here. Significant inroads. What is happening? Everyone dying to the orbs, the double orbs. They're there for a reason with this immortal side. I don't, I'm lost for words, James, how they even managed to get that situation rolling on in. We thought Virtus Pro had the Dark Master, but Immortals have got their Lego Lass as well. <laughs> I like that. Spearing the Cloud9. Cloud9, sorry, I'm looking at an old GoTV. Spearing the flip side players on the B bomb site. Immortals back to winning ways. Double orps on the CT side. Dangerous. Oh, wow. Is that an omen of things to come, James? Is that just a taste? I guess we'll have to see. And that's, that's the, the, the problem is that if both of those players, Kyanji and Henny, are being super confident and aggressive with their ops and just connecting, that is scary. And Henny might get himself a lot of kills here. Oh nice little nade. Oh my god. It's carnage. They do lose the AWP though, which is slightly annoying. I have to rebuy that one, but they do have plenty of cash. And I think it's Henny who's been, con yeah, it's Henny who's been consistently aggressive towards B. And look at his spawn. He's got the best spawn to go for another peak towards Upper B. Five AKs will be, uh, well, some of those AKs may be coming his way. Probably will be coming those way coming his way. But again, he's got the best spawn possible. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't try to rip somebody's chest open at the beginning of this round. And there he is. And there are two people to serve themselves up a sacrifice, but the Molotov is there and it's nice and deep and they know to fear Henny. And who doesn't at this point? I almost, when he looked at the flames there just for a second, I almost thought that, is he thinking that he might just run through it anyway and just go for a shot again, just like a second repeat into the flames? That would be something incredibly heinous that perhaps you might expect Henny to even try. But we do have Flipside now with that, the upper, or rather the the T side of Inner is under control now. Secret, and we'll see Flipside also beginning to bring some pressure towards Ali, but it will be 
for the moment delayed as they have been smoked away. In fact, they're actually not going to, I don't think, make any noise towards Ali in the end now due to that smoke. It's like they're just going to go for a simple play and a set-piece execution of smokes onto the A-bomb site here to try to break Immortal's double up setup. Immortal's running out of counter grenades, but there, there is the odd uh, Molotov. Steel is close in a forward position. Could get pinched. The flashbang is there. They're not checking his angle, but the 180 from Electronics is going to be good. That's a good start from Flipside moving into the A site. The frags, the exchanges continue. Lucas of a 2K, but it's down to the three on three. The bombs on the floor. There are 20 seconds left. IV smoked off, so maybe there's a chance to get that bomb down. And he backing off in the smoke. Sticking with his teammates, and now KNG is moving towards that eighth position. Great frag from Henny. Both orbs getting to work even more than it alone. He can't get it done. The bomb is planted, but that is it for Flipside. Seven rounds for Immortals. Can we can we just get that that flick shot from Henny again in slow motion, please? I just <laughs> that was just awesome. And that looks so that looks like a great situation for Flipside. But then then you look and see who's left alive on the Immortal side. Okay. Kianji and Henny, they're still alive with the orbs, and then they just start getting to work, getting those key pickoffs. And I don't believe it. This is what is this, James? I buy it with my little eye. Potential carnage. What is this? With an auto sniper. Look at this. Oh yes. man, that is such a great shot. That is that's he's painting, James. He's he's an artist. He's got the watercolors out. He is the elephant with the watercolors, but he's not just painting. He is stomping on his opponent as well. A five-round lead for Immortals. The auto sniper is out. Interestingly, now three snipers on a pistol run for flip side, and Waylander starts as he means to go on. Sorry, Henny does. Aggressive, of course, towards B again. He's here almost every single round, but he can't really be stopped. He's nine for three at the moment. The, the amazing thing about that is that not only is he going to force respect, and that is sort of intimidating. Oh, in well. the face. <laughs> Don't test any. But also, just he's going to force Flipside to use grenades on that position constantly. They just have to, otherwise, he's going to get peaks there. And he's going to go for those peaks. And are you confident in winning a duel against him? You probably shouldn't be necessarily. You'd prefer to use grenades first, as that's, that's you know, a guaranteed way to stave him away from that position. So that's what he's sort of doing by just constantly peaking that spot, because it can almost look a bit, you know, it looks predictable, but that's sort of the point. And so I do wonder what Flipside's response to that will be, whether they'll try to duel him with an AWP or if they just keep throwing grenades, and if indeed he'll keep going for that play. The auto sniper was revealed towards Ivy in that round, so will Flipside go for a fast play? Do they realize that there are three sniper rifles out? But normally you would expect the auto sniper towards the B bomb site, but the auto sniper is pushing through Ivy with support from KNG. It's a double sniper push of Ivy. When do you see that kind of nonsense? And also, Henny predicted this perfectly. He, he welded it, was posted up specifically to snipe Henny, but Henny didn't push up at this round. He just stayed low. So <laughs> right now that just tells you Immortals are really getting in the heads of flip sides, something that a lot of teams have struggled to do. Psychological warfare from the Immortal side. Flip side moving in towards B. Blade picked off by Bolts. The AK's around for the CTs as well, but he'll get traded by Electronics. Bomb needs to get planted, but there's a minute on the clock. They need kills. Flip side, they need frag. Two versus four, make it three. Henny picked off finally. Bombs down. And so is Electronic, leaving Wilderness alone. One versus three versus two sniper rifles and steel. Rifle kills, grenade kills. He's doing it all. He is hyped. This is a very strong Immortals because no matter what sort of positions Flipside are able to put themselves in from a, you know, however favorable they might be, if the Orps are alive, they are just taking so much, like they're taking players away just immediately from these setups. As soon as they arrive, they start to deal serious damage. That's a great grenade actually from Steel. Yeah, look at him, he's feeling it, man. He's feeling himself, he's in the zone. He is ready to make it to legend status. And you have to assume that legend status is the first target of Immortals. Yep. So far, so good in this match. No more qualifiers, please. <laughs> they, they, want, they want to avoid those major qualifiers, that yeah, is for sure. But they're not there just yet. Tactical timeout from flip side. Again, they can still get six rounds out of this half. By no means is it over. By no means are Immortals secure 
I love this tr the, the auto sniper, James, with two orbs. Yeah. I lo I actually just. I'm so happy right now. It's, it's just so fun to see. It's great to see for Immortals because it shows that they're playing with confidence. Yeah. They're not. They're not. They're playing to win. They're not playing t not to lose. So they're not playing with fear because you know it's an elimination match and a promotion match. They are playing their own game. This is how they want to play, and they're doing it with confidence. But flip side, we've seen big comebacks from them already in this tournament. And again, against the three snipers, now it's the fast play into the A bomb site. Three plays around the bomb train for both teams, but he'll get a first rank. Yeah, very fast. I think this is the perfect approach here from Flipside. Try to shock Immortals. Try to quake the earth beneath them as they are sitting behind smokes. Wondering, how do we get to using these snipers? And indeed, the snipers were even taken out of the hands of Henny and Kianji. So if there's any chance, that's good here for Flipside. It's this round as Lucas still looks for kills with that auto sniper. Nothing just yet. Oh, <laughs> all right. That's a sexy shot there from Lucas, and it might just be the start of something here now as Immortals start to push in, but they've lost one man to Waylander. Lucas still alive as well. So much time being bought on the bomb, and it's going to be Lucas now having to back away with the auto sniper. Very expensive weapon. Immortals, though, plenty of bank to buy up again with, and perhaps, James, they can, they can make the triple sniper setup work because when K and G and Henny have a sniper rifle, they have the most same mobility as a rifler. So that's one of the reasons why double op is hard is that mobility and the close range awkwardness. But those two orpers, man, that, they can thrive in those scenarios. They've gone straight back to the same buy. Immortals do not give a rat's booty about losing that round. They have spent the cash. They This is so awesome to watch. But flip side, they won the round. Let's not forget about the people on the T side. They are losing this at the moment, but now there are three people going towards the IV position and Lucas is in the middle of IV with an auto sniper on his own. This is absolute madness. Down uh -oh. to 20 HP. He's in trouble. And he's dead. Very brave play by yourself. Absolutely, especially at such close range. But that said as well, with the auto sniper, obviously for close range, the no scoping is very, very effective with it. That said, he will fall in this instance. Great, you know, credit to flip side to eliminate the presence of the CTs there and take that for themselves. And electronic with a very nice angle there onto Kanji, able to take him down. And all of a sudden, flip side of a five versus three. And they're the kind of team that they know how to play an advantage like this. And it gets even better. Steel tag, he goes for the risk. He knows he has to make a play. And he does so, able to take the frag and smoke off a forward position. This is very annoying for flip side. Still though, there are 45 seconds for flip side to work with. Waylander is, where is he? He is over towards the B bomb site, but he's not really in a significant position. I mean, it could be better. Like, it could be uh, in the pop dog. He could be towards upper B trying to get an entry or something like that. So, and the point about this is with, with A main taken, you wonder what the play is from flip side. Waylander taken down now by still. He is causing all kinds of havoc. Fortunately for flip side, Markelhoff is towards Ivy, which means the bomb can go down, but they've got to be worried about pop dog. Here they come. Bots ready to drop down, pop. And he ready to explode out of connector with the assistance of Steel, who's going to be eliminated by Blade. A savage shot straight to the head, and it's the same fate to be met by Bots as Henny. That's all he can do. Well, he can't do anything, he dies. <laughs> so, 9 to 4 is the score. Flip side making their way back onto the, the, uh, the rounds here. That's uh, their first consecutive round, so. Able to be in a position now where they can have a decent finish to this first half. A first half that has really been characterized by, well, the, the character of Immortals. The, the double ops, the, the flashiness, the aggression, and the willingness to do anything in, in, in some of these situations to get the kills with those sniper rifles. And we have Flipside once again up against the double ops. That was a nice shot there to follow up from Bolts. Not going to land on it, uh, anyone, oh actually, boy. but they get away alive. Grenade will land on flip side, but no one's dead. Everybody's alive. They have fought for control of upper B. There's a minute 30 on the clock here. Flip side, are they going for a fast round? Steel and KNG are in forward positions towards main. They will hear Markov running in the direction of main. 
Mokuba will start to uh, to walk now, perhaps, but his position has been given away. There will be expectation from Immortals, but those are the footsteps of a mere one person. They saw numbers towards the B bomb sites, so surely they will expect more in that direction. Any throwing a smoke towards lower B, I think. Indeed, he's doing exactly that. Lucas is around Ivy where Markov is now headed, so it seems Markov is trying to fake towards the A site after they were all spotted towards B. Now Flip's not playing this one quite slow. And I'm really mixing up that pace. It seems like a while ago that their response to getting crushed by the double ops was the fast play, but now they slowed it down again. Trying to be unpredictable, Waylander. Through the smoke there, looking to make a sneaky play as Markov tries to distract around Ali but goes down. Now it all rests on the entry frags here and Box is ready and awaiting with the Max 7. That's number one. Blade is dead but the trade comes in for Waylander waiting patiently but they've got so much to be up against here. Immortals are all four already towards the B yard. Electronic is, could potentially go for a flank. And he caught repositioning by Waylander. Good damage onto Lucas as well. Two fighting in B. Everybody tags the flip side. Electronic now takes him towards the B bomb site as well. His help is required. He knows there's no flank. Everybody's in trouble here. Almost steal the only man. High health. Lucas in the red. The Molotov is there, but Lucas's gun will do the job. And still will finish things off. So Immortals make it to double figures as we move into the last round of the first half. And still the man to defuse it. Having a very good game at the moment. 14 for 7. Yeah, great effort uh, from Flipside, but yeah, it's, it's a, today it's a very strong Immortals, isn't it? They, they are playing very well, and I'm very curious to see how Flipside will try to attack this last round. They've got the AWP up onto World Edit, so perhaps they'll try to go with some picks. And with some of the information that they've had so far, because Immortals are running double up so much, there's some, there's some Blade might have a read as to how to use World Edit in this position to get an opening and exploit one of these AWPers early on in the rounds. Looking for Henny again. There's no Henny though. Those days, I would say, are long gone, but uh, long being the operative word, there are still two orbs out for Immortals. And well, then it's got his own as well. Waylander above B. Always good to take, to take it early on the T side. And everything slows down. Steel and Lucas with close positions around that pop dog area, still holding an off angle. And KNG will make sure he's positioned so he's not exposed to main. Looking down Ivy, the team have got their backs covered. The Bolts gets picked off towards B. The boost from World Edit over the top. Boat Bolts exposed, taken down. Now KNG starting to move through Ivy. We have uh, an aggressive response from Immortals trying to even things up, trying to get info and position themselves accordingly. 45 seconds left now, so they have to start to make a move. Two flip sides. Lots of nades left to be used to get into these bomb sites. Lots of terror ass and try to obscure what's going on. But Immortals with the three man set up towards B. They look very prepared for a push here. We do have Henny right at the back lines, but with that AWP, so effective from this position. Lucas up close there with the M4 trying to slow the approach, but it's quite a savage approach here. Double entry coming in for flip side, and Henny still stalking at the back of the yard, but the T is now with a bomb down. There's problems here for Henny. No, there's a T in that line, and KNG's rotated from the IV position. His push allowed the CTs to rotate towards B in the first place, but they're still down in the numbers. Henny doing what he can, which isn't much. It's the last round. kng has got to go for it. It's a one versus four. He's been spotted. And Wayander now will bait him. And Electronic will finish things off. He was in a three-pronged, well, a triangle of doom essentially there. And that will be enough to allow Flipside to get five rounds on the board. It's not an ideal situation for Flipside, but it's better than uh, what could have been. And now the pistol will be important. And one thing I want to credit Flipside with is the fact that it can be very intimidating and off-putting for your game plan overall when you're up against a team like Immortals and they are firing off with an unconventional setup, two orbs, and when you run strategies which are supposed to counter those and it's not working as well as you, ex you would expect, they didn't over-adjust. So, and they, they kept their composure, they kept playing their game plan, 
and they didn't over adjust and that can sometimes be hard because if you adjust too much against a team like immortals then that's when you can start to really play into their hands as you abandon your game plan and your preparation perhaps as we go into the second half with Flipside on five rounds a workable scoreline just need to win that pistol to close the distance here for Flipside. Immortals charging into the B bomb site with four of their five players. Bolts on a late rotation. The first pick from KNG, despite the range disadvantage, he makes it work with the Glock straight in the face. Hunting Waylander, another headshot for him. It's a good start so far for Immortals. Fighting now around that connector area. Nothing but Immortals in this pistol round. Well, did it wondering what has happened to his comrades. Nobody answering the radio. And now he's being forced back. One tap for him. And Immortals, they stop in their tracks. They don't need to hunt him down. There's still time on the clock. They don't need to overextend. Trying to double peak KNG there. Now he will start to force him. Surely he's running out of bullets. Another kill though for World at it. And again, Immortals don't want to go crazy. They don't need to be like rabid animals indeed. They'll finally finish things off there. What a pistol run from Immortals. What a pistol run for KNG. Just walking in with three kills basically. Pretty devastating stuff. And that is a really hard pill to swallow. For Flipside to lose the pistol in the second half, of course. They were able to win the pistol in the first half, but they lost to the Force by immediately against Immortals, which really put them in a horrible place for quite some time. And then they got reset. You can see it on the scoreboard there. It's, it was a very, very hard first half for them. And they're going to be fighting tooth and nail here with a Force Bite to be able to try to do what Immortals did to them in the same position. To scout on World Edit, there is definitely a chance. Ooh, some burn damage there by Ali as well. All the damage counts. Four smokes down around the map. Three years, one fades from a main where a number of Immortals players can be found. Any, I forget what those things are called. That pallet, jumping on the pallet. Not quite seeing anything just yet. Looks like an A split will be the play from Immortals. Lucas outside. Ivy and Steel above the Pop Dog. The good old Pop Dog. I have to uh, do a search on the internet to see why it was originally called that. Can't find it now on current iteration of Counter Strike. Ooh, gotta be careful there. They so run into the A yard. The pistols can be all over the place, but. Immortals don't seem too concerned. They're going to force their way in anyway. They've only lost Kianji at the moment, and it's only Henny that's in the red, and he can allow his teammates to get some of the work done, such as that. Bolts with a long distance shot onto Markov. Bolts the a marksman with the Galil, it would seem. Not always the most effective weapon at the very long ranges, of course. And uh, Waylander in World Edit will do their best to try to keep these weapons alive now into the next round, with a, where they'll experience another chance to get some damage in we need a pop dog spray valve devs i know you're listening to me this is the voice of the mr rons and uh we demand a pop dog spray <laughs> tyvm i don't really demand but you know politely ask for waylander with his five seven and his kevlar will do his best to survive that's all he can do at this point Immortals imposing their will on these rounds at the moment. Immortals will want to escape the pollution of those plumes ASAP. And they're not far away. Four rounds required. Flip side on around $2,000 average. But two grenades have been purchased. And those grenades are highly explosive. One grenade deployed towards main. And the second one towards the pop dog. But nothing doing just yet. Anti eco territory for immortals. And again, they're not waiting around. That is uh, a wipeout. Almost everybody getting a kill. Bolts with two. Greedy boy. 13 to 5. Can flip side come back from this one? Now is the time to find out. It's buy time for the CT side. Yeah, now it really is the time to find out. Because again, if they lose this. I mean, of course, their loss bonus has been accruing, but the next round's buy, again, if they lose it, won't be too healthy. And this might be one of the best buys they would see unless they win this round. And, of course, Immortal's only three away now, so it starts to get very tense. The pressure really is mounting heavily upon Flipside's shoulders now. 
And the Morphles are looking to go uh, pretty fast with Kianji there, looking for a pick towards Inner. Won't be receiving one though. There's a smoke from the CTs very early on. But the CTs have to be careful in that sense. Flip side, they don't have really, they didn't have, have the, the money to get the full amount of grenades. So if Immortals do play a slower round, eventually flip side won't have any counter grenades whatsoever. One minute 20 and eight of 10 smokes have been deployed. The T's moving into the B bomb site. Waylander's on a similar angle to the CT. That CT's had in the first half, but Henny is the one to win the duel. Mark Lop will answer back, but what else can he do in this situation? His teammates forced away from Connector, but while that it's there as well, taking KNG down, the T's continue to, to push forward. But the bomb is down. The bomb is down, and Bolts, all his teammates are down. He's on his own. He needs to drive some Bolts into the faces of these players. He needs to do as much damage as he can. Flipside needs to survive in the numbers. And they're doing a good job of it. Electronic with the flank will be in round number six for Flipside Tactics. But there's another buy to come for Immortals. Six to nine K on most players. More tests will come the way of Flipside. And a test of the AWP might appear now as Steel does drop one onto Henny. Will Kianji get one as well? He can afford to do so. Do we see double opt side? They might be discussing that. He's still yet to buy at the moment, as we can see on the screen. And DD will be at the AK. And Kianji has shown himself to be a very complete player, able to rifle very effectively, as well as pistol effectively on, on top of the Yorping, showing why he's so valuable as the newest addition to the Immortals lineup. The addition that has brought them so much confidence and success of late. And now on flip sides, and with a chance. But again, it's all about Henny at the moment. And what he can do to get an opener. His teammates are tossing in grenades, trying to force some openings here and there and bait the CTs to use their utility as well. And Flipside perhaps wary of the angles that Henny might be trying to pick from and not giving him anything so far. So many smoke grenades deployed by both teams. And again, eight. Make it nine over a minute on the clock. So much obscurity, but Lucas has made his way to the top of Ivy, running distraction while Immortals make their way through main. Nobody's there around Ivy, Markolov rotating from B, but he's very far away. Lots of CTs around to connect, but what can they get done? Blade picking off Lucas, Henny answering back, Waylander taken down, Markolov down, moving towards Ivy. That might help with the bomb plant if it comes in later, but now Markolov is alone. One versus three, Henny taken out, they know where he is, now they can plant for Popdog, plant for main. And he can't do anything about it from where he is. But one versus two, surely he's got to go for this. Yeah, and it's very, very important that he picked off Henny with that burst of five bullets. As the AWP is really going to be difficult to deal with. And see the bolts will be rocking the AK. So Markloff, as he makes his approach here, looking for the element of surprise. He won't get that, though. And if Immortals are going to play the peaks correctly. They're going to make Markov's life almost impossible here to get the defuse in. So what does Markov do? Does he decide to just pick up a, an AWP if he can find one and hide to it out of there? It looks like he'll just try to save the M4. A really hard situation. Have to make the hard choices here, and it's going to be a hard choice that does, of course, result in another round for Immortals. 14 now, 14 to 6. Two away from making it to the quarterfinals here this major. Immortals waiting to leave a message after the beep, the beep of the defuse, but no message required. Markolov won't make the phone call. 14 to 6, Flipside forcing it up. Choice has been taken away from Flipside Tactics. Less than half the score of their opponent desperately need to win this round. It's all but over. All but over if they don't. Molotov's off the wall, Henny peeking an S3, but it'll be Bolts to get the first kill. Lucas towards Ivy once again, and Wilder and Blade will move away from Ivy as uh, Henny draws their attention to kill after kill. And look at the damage that he's done. The Molotov usage is so amazing here from Immortals, forcing them out of position and still proceeds to knock them down as a result. And he might just get himself another kill. In comes Waylander, still ready for that one. New as a B player. Knew he would catch him on the rotation. Great round from Steel there. And again, I love how the progressive aggression there with York picking at the, was simultaneously assisted by the likes of Steel and, and others on Immortals with a lot of Molotovs constantly pushing CTs out of position into the crosshairs of the likes of Henny and Steel. That was a really well executed round from Immortals. You've got to credit them that. And flip side, they are not left in a good place here.
That was a crushing round from Immortals, imposing their will like you rarely see Flipside at the complete mercy of their opponents. Ended up being schoolboy football, everybody running at Henny. And that's normally not a good idea. Match points and many match points for Immortals. Flipside buying all they can buy, which is a scout, a UMP, and some pistols here and there. Steel is all over this game. 22 kills for Steel. One of the uh, most enjoyable people to talk to in the scene, as you may see if Immortals are successful in this match. Flip side, it is last chance saloon, and the bell has been rung. Not many drinks left for the CT team, and Electronic, he will leave thirsty. Picked off already. Trying to crush them mentally, physically. Blade take it down as well. Markolov not going to be long after. Flip side, one by one, getting jettisoned into the sun, leaving this one. Just one man left. It's what they did. And uh, Immortals finish this one as they started in dominant fashion. They will be making their way to the arena for the quarterfinals of the PGL Major here in Krakow from the, uh, the Tower on Arena. It's going to be a lot of fun to see them continue their storyline after so much trouble to qualify. Brazil looking strong here in Poland. And uh, that was a very strong game for Immortals. Flip side, weren't able to show us much on train. Unfortunate end for them after some nice performances in some previous matches. And indeed, flip side did gatekeep some, uh, some other teams. But they're always here at these majors and we look to see them in the next one there run has come to an abrupt end thanks to immortals and i'm i'm really happy to see immortals looking that strong that was a dominant performance that's a great boost moving into into legend status into the playoffs that is a weight off their shoulders for sure and i think immortals are such a, an interesting team too they've been grinding so hard at so many events back-to-back -back lands they've experienced a lot of turmoil you know with you know what is the lineup going to be and then so much turmoil and not being able to make you know the qualifiers in the past when you know we see everyone sees that potential um no one more so than themselves and eventually they they find kmg and it's again an, an aggressive orpid that's quite a complete player as well and that seems to be somehow it just clicks and they have a style which obviously they're able to showcase here where they can make stuff work that other teams can't because of the nature of their players and that makes them very exciting yeah very nice match for mortals but there are definitely tougher tests to come once we reach friday but congratulations to them what a run for their first major how far will it go maybe paul and the desk can tell us Thank you very much for the commentary today. So it's been fantastic from all sets of our commentators, Dan and James as well as uh, Anders and Semmer and Henry and Salakist earlier on. They will, of course, be returning for the quarterfinals. We're going to wrap things up. We're also going to look forward to the quarterfinal draw. So don't go too far away. You think that's the end of the show? It's not even close. Uh, Yanko and Sponge are back with us. Great for Immortals. It's just a fabulous story, really, from a team that had tried so many times so hard to get into the major itself. The first time they actually do it, they reach the legendary spots of the top eight. Bolt and Steel are back in a, in a big way, you know, with the boys. And it's great to see the passion from them coming out once again. But, you know, in terms of the game itself, I think you can keep it very succinct. The game plan coming out from flip side was to be fast and as a pack. And that was, I guess, to negate any aggression that was going to come in from the Immortals guys. But I think Blade forgot that uh, they were born in chaos and uh, they, they loved it. They Lovely thrived at every moment. Yeah. So it was great to see. Yeah, it was a really good CT performance, really you know, helped them build momentum for the second half. Yeah, and it all started with that second round, right? Uh, Immortals losing the pistol yeah. round, but managing to win the force by. Uh, and after that, we were talking about whether the individuals of Immortals will be on point enough to disrupt the uh, methodical style of flip side. And they definitely were uh, KNG and Lucas on that outer bomb side, just completely shutting down everything uh, flip side had to throw at them. Let's bring in Still, because he's waiting in the player area and say... Uh, just, just pause for a minute, Lucas, and just listen to these words. Yeah. Immortals are now a legendary team at the Major. <laughs> Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> we made it. We made it. I'm so happy, really. I'm oh. so 
Tonight's gonna be so fun, man. Yeah, <laughs> don't go too crazy now. There's yeah, still the quarterfinals to do. Yeah, uh, no, I, I'm seriously, I'm so thrilled for you. You're a lovely guy, and it's a great team, and we know how passionate you are, and you have that Brazilian flavor <laughs> emotion, that Latin fever comes out. We love seeing it, and it, and it's such a joy to be able to see you go through and play in front of such a big crowd. Yes, it is, man. I mean, we Brazilians, us and SK, has this different kind of energy, man. I We don't know why. Maybe we have to fight so hard for it to be here. And yeah, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> they enjoy themselves and, and, and they're allowed to enjoy themselves. Let's talk about the game a little bit. You, you're also the MVP for the game. 23 kills on there oh. as well. But you know what? It was all about that CT side, wasn't it? Yeah, man. On the CT side, I was playing super great. Uh, and... Yeah, we already talked about this. The CT side has been our problem, Mortal's problem. Mm. Uh, when when we ha when we have a good CT side, we have a pretty good chance to win the match. Yeah, I've got uh, Sponge and Yanka. I'm sure they've got a couple of questions for you as well. Yeah, I got a quick one. Did you find out from Bolter's girlfriend what map you were going to be playing today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This time, th this time uh, after the game against SK, we knew that we we're going to play flip side, uh, and all of us went to the same room to discuss what map's going to be. And uh, we watched flip side against Navi, so we had like a really good idea how they're going to play. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, not much to say about this game. It was pretty straightforward for you guys. Didn't really have to get that invested in it either. How do you feel about coming forward now in the playoffs? Seems like for you guys as well, it's a big relief to have secured that legend spot. Now